Now this is a video that I'm particularly excited about making because food cooked outside always tastes better and we're in the hands of an expert chef. Almost, I believe, once a contestant on MasterChef is Josh Ibert. You've spent many, many months bikepacking in total and so he is going to show us the finer points of bikepacking cuisine. Josh, where do we start? Well, first off, we need to boil some water because tonight we have rice on the menu. Lovely. Um, you need to think about the type of fuel you can get in the country you're traveling in. So here in Morocco, we were lucky enough that Marrakesh is now big enough that you can get gas canisters for a stove. Um, however, we were pre prepared to, to find like petrol for a petrol stove. Um, yeah. You often find in kind of further afield places, um, Central America, for example, you can only get white fuel or petrol. Um, so the stove type pretty much depends on where you are. Europe's easy, you can just get gas canister stoves. Secondly, you need to be able to light your stove. You can use matches or a lighter. However, they do run out, they can get wet. So I always tend to take a flint with me, uh, which gives you a nice spark. And that, that always works, even if it gets wet. There we go. Ooh. Third time lucky. So we've got a titanium pot for this. So before we start, we should probably wash our hands. Um, hand sanitizer. We've been in the dirt all day and we don't need to get ill now. So, Thanks, mate. do a bit of that. And we'll give the, uh, the pot a little, little rinse out to make sure there's no dust or dirt in there. So we've just got water here. Um, you have to factor water into your, your kind of, um, your planning earlier on. So if you end up using the last of your water to cook dinner and you still have 100K the next, the next day, then you might find yourself in trouble. So try and be sparing with it. So we'll just get little bits of dust out of there and then we'll put it on and get that boiling. Now presumably, given that we're boiling water for like 10, 15 minutes with our rice, actually you could get it out of wherever because it's going yeah, to I mean, be safe to drink If you've got eat. a filter, that helps because you can get all the particles of dirt out. Uh, but let's face it, we've been riding on dusty, gritty roads all day, so we've probably already had our fair share of dirt today, so a little bit of dirt never hurt anyone. So whilst we wait for the water to boil, uh, tell us Tell us about your your cooking history with bikepacking. So, so last year, for example, you went for six months, right? You were in Europe and North America. How often were you cooking outside like this, and how often were you eating out? It depends where I was. Uh, so, Europe is is pretty cheap, quite often to to get a fairly decent meal. So, I probably cook outside every maybe maybe four or five days out of a week, um, and then have a meal the other two uh, in America. It was probably even more than that, um, and a bit of fast food as well. Yeah. Um, so it depends, you know, on location and what you can get. Uh, but the staple to eat is um, is basically rice or pasta, an easy to cook carb. Uh, it's not it's not the most amazing cuisine. I'll probably only get one Michelin star to be honest. But um, only one. Only one, I'm afraid. But you know, you've got to make do with what you've got. Yeah. Fair enough. How are we doing? I think we're getting there. Yeah, nearly, nearly. that's good. That's boiled pretty quick, isn't it? Yeah. I'll leave it till it's really boiling, just so it kind of does kill any bugs or whatever. Um, and then a little tip that, that I like to do is uh, just put the spoon in, because, um, well, I, I think I was uh, spooning out jam on some bread this morning and I kind of licked it to clean it, so I uh, should probably sanitize it. And the, wall is just boiling, the water is just boiling, so I'll just leave it in there for a minute. Bear in mind though that it is titanium, so if you touch the end, <laughs> yeah. it can get quite hot. Right, so we're boiling. Put that on there. Careful about that ASOS jacket. <laughs> Whoop. Brand? <laughs> Two person job? I don't know. Right Do you like my mug to measure it out with? Uh, That's how I measure rice at home. You can if you want. Yeah, this, this looks like it's more extreme. <laughs> extreme, extreme rice cooking. So we'll just chuck that in there. Whoa, whoa. All right, that boiled up quite well. It's a fair bit in there, so it might be overflowing soon. Right, it's important when you've got a, um, like a metal pan like this, it does tend to kind of burn to the bottom a bit if you're not careful. Uh, trust me, I've learned the hard way. And when that's the last bit of rice and you're really hungry, you kind of have to eat it. 
We also, you don't want rice to stick to your titanium pan, do you? Exactly. Right then, so the rice is just soaking up the last of the liquid. Can you, uh, can you let the viewers know, Josh, what is going to go with it to complete this well, recipe? As it's your first time bikepacking site, I thought I'd really, really treat you um, and get a pretty posh dinner. So let's see what we got. Isabel, atun grand sabor and salsa de tomate. Tuna with big flavour. Yes. <laughs> and they've even got ring pulls on them. Amazing. Which is another point. Always make sure you do a tin opener because there's nothing more disappointing than cooking your dinner, buying a tin of something good like tuna, and then realising there's no ring pull and you haven't got a tin opener. So, oh, that was devastating. So I always carry this rather handy pen knife that's been on many trips with me. And it's got, oh, that's not it. That's a screwdriver. So yeah, let's... Uh, Plug wow. that in there. Wow, that looks amazing. <laughs> Should we go for two tins? Oh, of course, yeah. One each. And then we've got one Let's for the a, morning, a for good, breakfast. A good plonk. Look at that. And now we're going to uh, mix it up and give it a good spin. <laughs> I almost think we could get three tins in there. Josh, should we go for it? Well, why not? Right. Come on then, that looks amazing. Let's just leave it for a couple of minutes. What? Because the heat of the rice will just warm the tuna a little bit. I think the Moroccan sun has been warming the tuna <laughs> steadily all afternoon on my, <laughs> well, no, on my saddle bag. It'll only take 30 seconds in. Okay, right, good. How many lumps would you like? Loads, please. Loads of lumps. We'll start. And actually, you know, don't get me wrong, this is, oh, this is not that. gourmet, no offense, Josh, but it smells amazing. And I think that is the power of outside and the power of hunger. <laughs> How's it tasting? You ready for this? Tuna with big flavor and rice. <laughs> You know what? That is absolutely hits the spot. It is not gourmet, but given where we are, like in the midst of the Atlas Mountains, given how hungry we are, that is top stuff. Anyway, thank you very much for the tips, Josh, because it's not no just problem. about tuna with rice. It's about all the other hard-earned lessons that you've uh, that you've given us. So thank you very much. If you want to watch any more uh, how-to videos about bikepacking with Josh and drawing on his experience, then click just down there for another video. This is great, mate. Thank you very much.